<laughs> Man, I just wanna lay in the shade, get in those shade, you know what I mean? And pontificate on life. <laughs> Under the city lights, wherever the wind go take us. If it's good, we make it contagious. Said we vibing, laying on black sand beaches, thinking of what life teaches. So glad and fall from the deep end. Said we vibing under the city lights, wherever the wind go take us. If it's good, we make it contagious. Said we vibing, laying on black sand beaches. Thinking of what life teaches So glad and fall from the deep end Said we vibing Even when the days feel low Faye's gonna have that glow Already moving Where they ain't think I go Never show your hand no fold Keep that poker face shining Keep that hope and faith And face the fire Ain't no trace of hate That you can find If you say I'm hating Then you lying Lying, lying Put your hand on the Bible Won't you try and say that again Again Polygraph it I'll probably map it Got an alibi or friend Friend Seen lightning hit same place twice Won't say I'm God but Zeus like Also the guy with the juice I Faze have a shot we crew Vibing Under the city lights Whatever the wind gon' take us If it's good we make it contagious And we vibing Laying on black sand beaches Thinking of what life teaches So glad and fall from the deep end And we vibing Under the city lights Wherever the wind go take us If it's good we make it contagious Said we vibing Laying on black sand beaches Thinking of what life teaches So glad it fall from the deep end Said we vibing And thinking about them things my mama told me Courageous heart, it's pumping heart Got cold feet All I gotta do is jump now I'm afraid of heights Does that mean I'm afraid of the top now? Feel vertigo Try to make the place I live or trying to go But I know what it feel like How I be in this real life Can't be complacent or complicit Life's complicated enough The destination is us Why don't you go like we're numb? Vibing Under the city lights Wherever the wind go take us If it's good we make it contagious Said we vibing Laying on black sand beaches Thinking of what life teaches So glad it fall from the deep end Said we vibing Under the city lights Wherever the wind go take us If it's good we make it contagious Said we vibing Laying on black sand beaches Thinking of what life teaches So glad it fall from the deep end Said we vibing And shalom everyone, shalom. I want to welcome everyone over here to the, from Sinai to the day. We, we're actually looking at from the mountain until the day and what we need to be doing. So today we're going to be going through some interesting things that we need to really understand. And basically what's going to be happening today is we're going to start where we're going to be starting in Genesis. We're going to start in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. But I'm going to be showing you how this message is actually illustrated. That's why it's called Gospel Illustrated. And with that, I'm making sure that each and every one of us is going to start from the beginning to where it's going to force you, if you decide to really engage yourself in this, to where it's going to force you to see things spiritually <clears throat> and not just carnally. But the main thing is, is with this, you have to make sure that you're fully participating in this. If you're not fully participating in it, then technically you're wasting your time. So you're wasting your time even coming here. Because most people still, no matter what, they just want to listen to the word and really don't try to be doers of it. So technically you're wasting your time here. And the main thing is what we want to do is teach not just our adults, but also our children, how they actually need to see this construct that we are set in. This is the most important thing. So what we're going to be doing and what I'll be doing is we have a couple of things that's going to be happening. We've got a couple of things I'm going to be showing you later on what you will be able to do and how you can accomplish a lot more things and help you in a lot more areas, especially with children. 
And then you have some adults who who still going to participate in this because it's not just for kids, but it's for everyone. But it helped the kids because it's going to give them activities. And now the adults won't have to try to sit there to figure out what's going on. We're going to make sure we supply everything that you need. So we want to welcome everyone to this Gospel Illustrated. It's the message illustrated to what we're going to be looking at. So we're going to be looking at an insightful exploration of a profound depth of God's word in his wonders, in his wonderful creation. And we're going to be embarking on this journey. So we're going to be looking at this in a deeper way, making sure we can understand God's word, not just physically or literally. We want to understand it spiritually. So let's, let's, let's get started. We're going to find out a few things here and get a better understanding. And we're going to be writing out everything, so don't worry about a lot of stuff, but we're going to make sure a lot of things is for you. And the same thing is we'll see where it begins here with Genesis 1-1. We're starting right there. We're going to start right there. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But we want to find out what's going on because we have to take this powerful journey that's going to force people to really see what is actually going on spiritually and not physically. The reason why I say that, because we have to remember what Paul even said to each and every one of us. He says, for when the time ye are to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as need of milk and not strong meat. We got to remember those profound words and what Paul is urging us to where we can graduate from the foundational teachings that many of us has been exposed to and learned Christianity type teachings. Many of us was exposed to this. Many of us learn Christianity type teachings. That represents milk. So to this deeper side, we need more nourishing understanding to embody this solid food state that we need. So Gospel Illustrated endeavor is gonna guide us to this 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 mature this maturity in understanding. So we can seek to move beyond the basic principles of faith into a rich, meaningful discourse that uncovers the profoundities of the doctrine of Christ. So I'm, I personally am striving to engage with you the teachings in the most interact and most complex levels to where we can seek out strong meat of a gospel message. This mature understanding of the scriptures fosters a richer, closer relationship with God, enhancing the spiritual renaissance of our lives. So through what we see in Genesis 1-1, as we're going to be diving into that in beginning, we have to dive into the wonders of creation of the natural world, where it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is simply yet a profound statement provides a gateway into exploring an infinite wisdom and power of God. That's what this is doing. That's why this is so important. So this intricate tapestry of life, this is where the complex ecosystem vary and climax, and then we have to look at the awe-inspiring, all things within us with the awe-inspiring celestial bodies. So all that attest to the divine intelligence are behind their design. So with this, each and every one of us, we're going to be going on to this gospel illustrated journey about enriching our spiritual vision. It's about seeing the world not just as a physical realm, but as a testament to God's grandeur and divine tapestry woven with the purpose of love and by realizing every sunrise, every bird song, every rustic leaf, all winds, uh, a verse in God's oracles is reviving in revealing his nature in his message to us. 
That's what this is doing. So it's it's about moving from milk. It's about moving from milk. And, and about also while we moving from milk, it also teaches us how we can move over to strong meat. That's what it's going to move us over to. That's what it's going to show us to where we can truly understand and appreciate the marvels of God's creation and his everlasting gospel. So I want to make sure that each and every person understand this as we move forward. Because what this is, I want you to label this top, top paper as we're going to be getting started. I want you to label your paper as creation of the natural world. That's what I want you to put at the top of your paper. Because we're going to be embarking on things to where you're going to find out a lot of things. But then don't worry, we're going to make sure all the children and everybody are going to have a lot to do. So even with the kids that five and under, don't worry about them too much because you're going to have all the tools you need. I, that I promise you to assist your, your children to where I promise you they will be highly engaged later on what needs to happen. So as we embarking on this journey to this deeper knowledge and understanding connecting the natural world and this profound spiritual truth through God's creation, we see the vivid and tangible expression of his divine power and wisdom. So this natural world is not merely a physical reality to be lived, but it's also a canvas on which God's love and creativity are painted. It's here. So each element of this world and from the highest mountain and from the tiniest grain of sand is a testament of the beauty and complexity of God's design. This is the grandeur of the creation that inspires awe for each and every one of us. The intricates, the, 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 these intricates, these stimulants of our curiosity that goes on immerse ourselves into this world of physical marvels, discern these spiritual dimensions, transcend our observatory and as these things are tangible or our quest for a deeper connection with the divine being so in scripture we often read even with Yahweh or Jesus retreating to the nature in the solitude in prayer indicating the important spiritual faucet the interaction that's of this natural world even the psalmist he describes something when we look at Psalms 119 this is why we know this is this is 100% true. In Psalms 19, and we're looking at verse 1, it says, The heaven declared the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. The, in the firmament showeth his handiwork. The heavens declared the glory of God and proclaims his, his, his handiwork. So by observing nature, we open ourselves to a spiritual lesson that can teach us from humility patience, endurance, and growth. So our observation that I want each and every one of these students that we're going to be going through, just like I said, we're not going to be tying people up for very long times. But today we're going to focus on observing the vastness, the complexity of a natural world around you. This can be a panoramic view of your surroundings. We're going to be looking at star field, night skies, intricate details of landscape, they can pause and appreciate the miracle of God's creations. The marvel at the beauty. Seek the divine wisdom hidden in the, to the depths to engage in nature. This deeper level, you may find that it enhances our, your spiritual understanding and fosters a greater sense in connect, your connectiveness with God. So, as we embark on this journey of observation... We got immensely of this creation that can seem, well, most people are going to look overwhelming. But this a wide open landscapes with this endless horizon. And what we're going to do is unsearchable, unsearchable depths of the sky. And it all that serves as a testament in the, in the magnitude of God's creation. So yet with this same vastness, it is not meant to be diminish us at all. It is not for that. Instead, it invites us to marvel at the divine architect who conceived and shaped 
this grand design. That's what this is for. So as we look at this creation in, the, in this expanse, it, we have to look as we captivate the intricate details of the natural world. We gotta be looking at even a leaf on a tree, the pedestal or a flower. The star in the sky is unique. These small details are minuscule crafted, but it reminds us that God is not only the creator of all encompassing things that we see outside in the in, in outside the world. But it's every aspect of life. These microscope marvels and these divine precisions, they suggest and give us a, a better glimpse of the infinite care and attention that God pours into his creation. These are the things we have to look at. These are the things we have to understand. So at the same time, we are confronted with the vast and the diversity of life in the broad spectrum and in the species, each of these specific characteristics and unique roles that reflect the abundant creativity and divine observing diversity, not only for life itself and broads our understanding, but for the world, but for us, but for, to help us to deepen our appreciation for the creed, for this creative genius behind its existence. These observations when combined, introduce a sense of humility, realization of the incredible detail woven into creation that can bring us a place in profound reverence of our creator. Recognizing our place in the grand design simultaneously makes us feel so small yet deeply valued. We are small on a grand scale. It is universe, but we are unique and precious in God's sight. So this will lead us up to a reflection to where we can consider the divine creation power which scriptures implies. How does acknowledging or acknowledging the creative power affect our appreciation in our world around us? How does this deepen your understanding in a place of this universe? So the grand tapestry of creation is not merely passive observers, but it's an active participants that's thread through the woven of this fabric that we're going to be embarking on. So it increased our appreciation of this world and our peace to where it can transform our relationship with the natural world, ultimately with the creator himself. So we have to look at this and we have to look at these reflections. As we said, you know, once we've taken the time to truly observe and reflect upon the magnitude of the world, Question now arises, this question seeks to understand the personal experience, insights that ingrained during these profound journey and discovery. So I'm gonna invite you to ponder on what did you see, and this is what we're gonna be doing, what did you see during your observation and your reflection? So with this, we're gonna be doing family projects. And with this family project, as I said, this is nature's treasure hunt. And as I said, we've seen this in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. We've seen that. But I want you to think about also Genesis 1 1. For this foundational statement encapsulate the intricate grandeur in every element of creation, saying God's masterful artistry and bindless imagination. He elaborates on these things in the Testament. So when we see Hebrews 5.12, it reminds us of the essential need to progress from a carnal thing to a spiritual understanding, moving from spiritual infancy to a mature discernment. He said the same thing, though as, he says, for though time you ought to be teachers, we have need to be teach. We have someone need to teach you again, the first principles and oracles of God. We come to have need of milk, not strong, not strong meat. So this emphasizes the need to advance beyond the elementary teachings of Christ because these are the things that was always taught wrong, but we need to understand exactly what he's saying. Honoring and honing our abilities to see beyond the surface 
This is why it's so important. Some people are going to sit there and look at it as not important, but it's extremely important. We have to look beyond the surface and perceive these profound spiritual truth that is woven in this creation. And to show you even more about this here, I want to show you this then as we're getting into this. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, And I want to un I want to undo these. I want to undo those. All I want is verse twenty. It says, "For the invisible things of Him from creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse." See how you put that? They are without excuse. Paul expresses this, this since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes. I'm going to say this real, I want to say this real carefully with you. His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even this internal power in Godhead. So now everything around us, we have no excuse when we stand before God. This is why I always push that kind of strongly. It's without excuse. This underscores that the natural world as we see it is a revelation of God's nature and character. So through the lens of spiritual understanding, these things we observe in nature become metaphors and lessons that deepen our relationship with God and our understanding of his ways. Do everybody understand that? Do everybody understand what I just said? Because this is the important part. Some people are going to take this serious, and some people, they're going, to, they're going to do what they normally do. The ones that do what they normally do and not really worry, I'm, those people I don't worry about because they're going to do what they normally do. But I want people who are serious. And I want to make sure that we all understand where, where, where I'm coming from. In Wisdom of Solomon, we're going to see something there. In Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 5, This helps us on, on what we're going to do. It says, For by the greatness and beauty of the, of the creatures, proportionable, the maker of them is seen. The maker of them. So now, who makes them, we can now see it. Because when you want to see God, actually, you want to tell you what? Let's do this. Let's do this. I want to show you something. Because cause this actually ties to what I'm talking about. In this, uh, in Mark chapter 7. 7, and I believe it's 7. In, is it Mark 7? Mark, hey, I believe it is. Oh, yeah, okay. It says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching of for, for the doctrines and commandments of men? And what they doing is this. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold to traditions of men as washing pots and cups and many other such things ye do. See, we have a need, we have to shift from these mere accepting traditional doctrines to personal and seeking experience from God's truth through his creation. So we must cultivate a heart of understanding to where we can see what we need to see with our eyes and our ears to hear truly and comprehend the spiritual lessons that God's creation imparts. Only then we can truly be grateful and stand at awe and marvel at his marvelous works, gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for God's nature and, and who is our creator and sustainer. So the world around us, my friends, we, we're in a divine classroom. The world that you are surrounded in, you are in a classroom filled with lessons, shapes, and molds us, help us to become who we are meant to be in Christ. So our call is for spiritual maturity and compels us to seek God through his active engagement with his creations. So what better way that we can do in, to dive into a firsthand into the wonders of God? through this meticulously woven world by embracing the attitude, even everything as childlike curiosity. Everything has to be embraced as childlike curiosity. We can uncover the divine mysteries hidden that's right before us in plain sight. 
as we open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to God in this creation, embracing in the adventures, the holy quest for knowledge. Understanding will enrich our spiritual journey. Each time we step away from the confinement, human doctrines and traditions and perspectives. So we need to embark on the spiritual uh, discoveries and appreciation of the natural world. Seeking the wisdom that's embedded in every leaf, as we said before. So we have to be ready to go forth with this sacred exploration. The materials, they help us to assist us on this journey. I'm going to write these down, but I'm going to also put these up on the board later. But I'm going to tell you the materials you need for your nature treasure hunt, your checklist. You need a pen or pencil and paper. You need a pen, a pencil, or paper to mark your discoveries and your mark your discovered treasures. Two, you either need a camera, a smartphone, a tablet with a camera. That's optional. But that but that'll help you and that'll help your children do even more. Because I'm gonna even put some pictures up to help you do this thing. So now with that, I want to make sure to give people time to write this down. Cause I know some people might write a little bit slower than others, but I want to make sure everybody have time to write this down because we're going to find out what's needed. Because now we've got to find out what is this what is this checklist? Because in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So we need to find out some of the treasures that, that we're going to find. And the, the treasure is that what we're going to find for the family, for kids, for adults, for young ones, and all in between. So today is going to be include. Tomorrow we're going to go on this exploration. And I want you to take your, your children, your family, and the first thing I want you to look for is like a leaf. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna switch this over. I'm gonna put some things up here, and um, I want you to see what's going on. So what I want you to do is the same thing is you gonna some people are gonna look for a leaf, a leaf, a flower, and and the same thing you'll see even like this here. This is a flower, but we going some people are gonna look for a leaf. And I didn't have a picture of a leaf, but I can get one. But some people just look for a leaf. Just a leaf. Either take a picture of it, but I want you to mark it down on your paper. A leaf. And we're gonna we're gonna come to an end. I'm gonna tell you why you're doing what you're doing. Some people, I want you to take a picture of a bird. Some people are going to get a bird in mid-flight. Some people are going to be able to do it, you know, maybe not like this one. I didn't take this picture anyway, but some people might get this, some people might not. You catch a bird in mid-flight, or you might see a bird flying over. You sketch them in mid-flight. That's all you want to do. But I want you to put that in your treasure chest. You mark that down. I have a bird in mid-flight. I have this bird in mid-flight. And the same as I said, you know, um, I think uh, that's not one. I was trying to find a regular leaf. I can't find the leaf. But but the same thing is with the vibrant flower, we'll go ahead and we'll use this. We'll just double this one. We'll just go ahead and double this one here. But then you want to find a flower, a vibrant flower. You find some leaves and find a flower. The leaves got to be interesting. Don't have just any flower, any leaf. Get a leaf of an interesting shape. Just weird. Just a weird shape leaf. And I don't have to pull it down. Actually, I got something. Or, you know. You just want something there, but you want to take that picture. You want to take that picture, but they have to mark it on their on their thing. And this is mainly for adults and younger kids. 
You let them take the picture. Don't you take the picture. You let them take the picture. Don't you take the picture. Let the kid take the picture and you take your own picture. I want to make sure all these adults understand that. Because adults, no, let me tell you that. No, you let them take their own picture. Don't you take their picture. Don't you take none of their pictures. You let them take their pictures. You take your own pictures. Cause this, this, cause this, I know will run into a problem. Somebody might have a five or six year old. No, I'm gonna take you. No, don't you take nothing. You let them take their own picture. Cause we we had a big problem with that. Some you might take a picture of a tree, towering tree. The next one you out there, you looking for the tree. Let me see. Move this up. You might take a tree, towering tree. And you let them take the picture of the tree that they want to take a picture of. You let them take the picture of what they want to take a picture of. It might be a tree of that stature, or it might be a towering tree, like a palm tree, like we have in California. We have some palm trees that is pretty, you know, they, they, they grow up to a couple of hundred feet that you can go down in L.A. and see them. And they might want to take a picture of a tree. But as they're doing this, they have to mark it off on their checklist. They have to put it in their treasure box. Say, okay, okay, in my treasure chest, I have a palm tree. I have a, a bird in mid-flight. I have a flower just uh, right here, and I have a leaf. I wish I had the leaf, but I'm sorry I don't have the leaf. I looked for it, but I don't know why I couldn't find one. But, but you just want that leaf. And you want to put that and take a picture of it and you want to add it in your treasure box. Then you want to get something else that's really good and something else and might be hard for my, my little girls. <laughs> my little girls, they might have a problem with it. Some of them do. I'm going to tell you my granddaughter, she was dumb because she loved messing with bugs for whatever reason. I don't know. She liked playing with bugs. But you but you want to get a picture of a of a of a of an insect. Minuscule insect. It can be a lesser ladybug. It could be uh, um, this here. I don't know. Uh, that look like a dragonfly, but I'm not really too sure what that is. Or you might want a um, you might want a caterpillar. You have these things that are there. But you want to put these in your box. You want to put them in your box. You want to have them in your box. But they have to have a picture of it and all these things there. Let me let me put some more. But these all these things, they have to you guys have to find them. And then I'm going to give you some more instructions on what you need to do to get these. And then we're going to find out what we're going to do with these. And then I want you to, you guys go somewhere, and I, I want you to make sure you can find a, a perfectly round stone, a round stone, a rock. Perfectly round. You let them find the rock. You let them find the rock. Don't you sit there, is this a good, is this a good rock for you? Don't you do that. You let them find the perfectly round stone. Don't you get mixed up in their business. You got to look for your own stone and you leave their stones alone. So I have to keep getting on our adults like this because they'll sit there like, no, nah, this, this is a better stone for you. No, don't just stay out their business. All you do is just be a parent. Once you get these done like this, I want you to also do one more. I want you to, while you're out there, you might be out there in the daytime, and I want you to find a, a, a cloud. A cloud, uniquely shaped. Uniquely shaped cloud, just like that. A uniquely shaped cloud. 
and they're going to take a picture of it. They're going to take a picture of all these things. This unique shaped cloud. And the catch is, you're not looking for things like cars and this. Those are man things. These are things that is created by God. So our aim is for the mix that reflects the variety of life and landscapes around you. That's what this is. So those are our instructions. So we're going to sit there and this shows the family and ensuring everyone to understand each treasure on the list, what it represents. Then once you see what it represents, you go back. I want you to go back. And I want you to do something. You go back and you read that verse right here. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You go back and you read that with them, the ones who can't able to read, but the ones who read, you go back and read that. And you're going to see how each one is related to every item that you have on that, that treasure track. Then on that treasure hunt, you're going to see how each piece has a piece of God. So the same thing as what we're doing. So now when you get back here, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He created that flower right, that you're looking at right there. Different from every other one. He created this bird. In the beginning, God created this bird. In the beginning, God created this flower. In the beginning, God created that tree. In the beginning, God created that ladybug, that dragonfly, that tree, that caterpillar, that round rock that you found. Created those clouds. In the beginning. So you got to plan your day out for nature friendly, like in a park. Some people might be close to a forest, but make sure it's a safe place that allows you and your family and your kids to explore the wonders of nature. But you got to make sure when you go against the wonders of nature, make sure you have your checklist, your pen, your paper, your camera, your smartphone, your iPad with you. Because they got to take the pictures because they, they have to document this. This stuff they have to document. So if you have those cameras, those smartphones, those tablets available, you arm your kids with that. Encourage them to take pictures, photographs of their treasures that they spot. Not you spot, they spot. Don't say, is that a good one? Don't do, don't do that. You give them the instructions and you let them go do it. That engage them further to help them create a visual memory of their exploration. So once these treasure hunts conclude, now you can spend time together discussing the items that they found. Reflect on them as being part of God's creation to where they can appreciate the beauty and diversity of the world that's set, set around us. To extend this, this will help your children, inspire them to draw, to paint. If you want to do a little painting exercise, they can draw it or paint it. To observe the things that they hunt when they get back home. So the same thing is, I'm going to take these out and I'm going to put something else out. Let me see if I can do this. So, but what we want to make sure is a couple of things. You know, and this is just not for kids, this is for adults. This will help you to start seeing things spiritually because what we're doing, we're getting back in into connection with God. That's what we're doing. So the same thing is we have this here and we see our checklist. This is our checklist right here before you. So when you go back, you can sit there, a leaf of an interesting shape. That's what you need. You need to take a picture of it. Interesting shape. You need to take a picture of it. And then you want to catch a bird in mid-flight. 
Now I'm 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 really good over here. We have tons of of uh, hummingbirds, tons of them. So I, I can pretty much get one in mid-flight. But the main thing is, if you don't have hummingbirds around you, it'll be hard to catch one in mid-flights. But you can catch pigeons and and hawks and other things in mid-flight. You can catch them in mid-flight. You want to catch a vibrant flower. But then if you got your kid with you, you let your kid, what is a vibrant flower? You explain to them how they need to take a picture of a colorful flower. And don't you sit there and say, is that a good one? That's the, that's the ignorantest thing we can do. We, is that a good one? Don't ask them anything. We need a picture of a vibrant flower, very colorful flower. And you let them do it. Don't try to, don't try to coerce them over to what it is. Take one of a towering tree. You want a minuscule insect. You want them to take a picture of it. Perfectly round stone. A uniquely shaped cloud. You let them take the picture of it. As I put it at the bottom, our aim is to mix and reflect on a variety of life, the landscapes around you, to where it's going to help you understand God's creation. These are just, look, those are just seven things. Seven things. And he created millions. We're going to be looking at seven things that he created. We're going to put those in our, in our treasure hunt. These are things that are going to help us out a great deal. Don't take some, I took a nice picture of a car. I took a picture of a, of a building. God didn't do that. We want things God did. Those are things that God created. We don't, if you put something in there, man created, you're wasting your time. So the other one is, um, I want to pull over on another one. And I want to put that there. Um, we also have where I did do, actually I got to go out of it. Let me log out of this. So, so we need this message illustrated for that reason. So the same thing is, we also created this here, which is Gospel Illustrated. So if you end up signing up for this, we're gonna be, this will be complete most likely by tomorrow evening. But people are gonna actually sign up for it today if they like. But Gospel Illustrated is no different than like a Facebook where you can go in there and kids can actually upload their pictures and even comment the same way you would do anything else. The same thing you do on, on Facebook, you'll be able to do it right here. And then you can document your journey because that's what this is for, the way you can document your journey as you're going on this spiritual journey. So, and this is open to anybody. So anybody can actually join it, but my thing is I'm asking camps, don't join. Because I see you coming there with a with a with a dumb name, I promise you, we're gonna have people in there, they're gonna they're gonna remove you. It's that simple. But it's open to everyone. But I'm just telling you, camps, I, I don't want no camp in there. At all. Because those are some of the people they, they deceive you even with their names. So that's why I don't care for camps. So people may sit there and feel I have a, a thing with camps, but camps come in with false names. And so as soon as they come in with their false name, they're telling you right at the beginning they're liars. They're deceiving you even by who they are. So I have no reason for them to come in there. But anybody else, it's open to anybody. So you can invite friends and everything. They can, you can sit there. You can ask questions. Um, let me sit there. Let me go into this real quick just to show you. Um, you can uh, actually get in there. And um, you can you got your own your space. You can go in here. You can biblical vocabulary. You got historical context. You can ask questions, and you have much more in here, to where you can always do whatever you need to do in here. Whatever you need to do is here. But you can put pictures. You can post videos. You can do whatever you want to do right here. You can share with people, you can talk back and forth. You do the same thing, it's no different. So we're not here to monitor anyone. 
we're not there to sit there to monitor you. You're, you're, you know, we're not looking for profanity and all this stuff. But the main thing is I'm not looking for camps. I have no interest of no camp to be in there. But if you talk, whatever you're talking, that's between you and what you're doing on here. As long as we don't see profanity and all this stuff being blurted all over the place and uh, conspiracy theories and all this stuff, we just want this. This is actually your spiritual journey to where you can post your spiritual journey here to help others to see what you're doing. That's what it's for. Not to sit there to, you know, buy shower while all that all that silly I'm not there. That's this is not there for that. So they can do that on Facebook, but here we want people where they can they can sit there and talk about whatever they actually need to talk about. So this is your first look. This is where your journey, you have, everybody have their checklist. I just want to make sure before we leave, just like I said, I'm not going to hold you long. We've only been here about 40 minutes. So I want to make sure that everybody see what their checklist is. And you can go back and you go back and look at the video if you need to. But the main thing is, this shows you what you need and tells you how to go through what you need to do. It's exploration will help you and it's going to force you to see things spiritually because once you start seeing it, it's going to help you immensely. It's going to change everything. Your kids, it's going to change the entire world because now your kids actually is going to draw them closer to where now they can see and they can differentiate between what God is and what man is doing. They'll be able to tell you in detail the differences of a leaf. You can get so much detail on a leaf. You can see, take closer pictures of it. If you have a magnifying glass, you'll see the veins that is in the leaf. You can see those. So with that, we hope that each and every person, you know, you know, join over there. You can go over there. It's free to join. There's no thing for that, but it's open to anyone but it's called gospelillustrated.com. You can go right there, you can sign up for it, but you'll see it'll be completed. You can sign in, most likely go in there, but it'll be completely done tomorrow. And same thing is, um, you have uh, this one quote, what about people with learning disabilities? So the same thing is when you just put up people with learning disabilities, technically I don't know why you put that up there because the same person don't have a learning disability. But the main thing is, if people have learning disabilities, they have to have things that's, that's set up for them. So so we're not here to try to, oh, well, what about this or what about that? I can say, what about blind people? What about many things? So that's the whole catch. So with that, everybody have what they, what they need right there. So I say until till next time, as we go through it, hopefully that each and every person understand what it is and what's required of you. And then as you take your pictures and you get your stuff on your checklist, you can share them right there. You have a place where you can share them and we can see it. You can share it with all of us, we can see it there. If you don't wanna share it, that's fine, that we understand that too. But. I would like to see them because I'm going to be sharing some of the pictures that I actually take myself. Because this is what I had to do for my master of breadship, what I, what I had to do with every verse. So some of this stuff, I'm going to be going through it again with you guys. But the main thing is I'm going to be sharing some of the same stuff. So put up the same pictures or different things. We're going to see things that are different. So with that, I appreciate you. The kids have all the, the papers, the, the homework, and what they need to do. We have everything we need to move forward. So with that, I say to each and every person until next time. Until we meet again, I say shalom.